So we already know that Einstein's theory of a general relativity accidentally explained the extra precession in Mercury's orbit, but it made predictions that were far less intuitive. Now, people like to talk about how scientists see evidence and change their minds. It happens, not as often as it should, but this is a crystal clear case. Einstein's theory was so counterintuitive and so hard to accept that a lot of people just wouldn't accept it. And they just basically said, not possible, nope, not a possibility at all. And, well, one day their minds changed. And it wasn't just overnight. It wasn't by a coincidence. When Einstein realized that space itself could be treated as bending under gravity, that also meant that light, which had no mass, but which followed those geodesics we talked about, would also bend around objects with gravity. So in other words, the force of gravity, which we had previously seen as gm1, m2 over r squared, could have an effect on a body with zero mass. And that is something that people considered absurd. But they figured out a way to test it because that is the way that we really prove things one way or the other. If we take it to the lab, we try to test it, ideally we try to break it. Most labs are designed to find something absurd and something extreme and show that it doesn't work. In this case, the idea was that if you had a star in the sky and you knew at a certain time it was normally behind the sun, well then light that came from it might be warped by the sun. So for those of us here on earth, the star that should be blocked by the sun would be visible and appear to have come from beside the sun. Similarly, light from this side would also warp, so it would be visible over here. And in fact, one star could be spread out and make a ring in the sky. The problem was trying to figure out how to test it, because when the light gets spread out like this, it gets even more faint than usual. And we still can't see stars in the daytime, let alone when there's the sun around them. But there was hope. In 1919, there was an eclipse coming. So the moon and the man within it were going to block our view of the sun. If you were in the shadow of the moon on Earth, when that happened, you would be able to clearly see behind the sun and not at it. So, there was a rather famous experiment called the Eddington Experiment. They had observers set up at different points in the world. Because when that solar eclipse happened, that shadow would drag along the Earth while the Earth rotated under it, and there would be multiple places to see this eclipse around the planet. So they got multiple teams of observers all over the world to go out and look for this phenomenon and check to see the positions of the stars. And they found it. The light did warp. We did get a circle of a star behind the sun during the eclipse. This was one of the earliest and most fortifying ideas of relativity and confirmations of the theory. So people who did not like relativity and were trying to blow it out of the water, went out, tried to do so, saw something incredibly counterintuitive that could not be explained unless you use the theory of relativity and said, okay, Einstein's right. And it was this moment in 1919 a full 14 years after things were adopted. I mean, this is, to a lot of people these days, the difference between 1905 and 1919 doesn't seem that long because it was they're both a little over 100 years ago. In our minds, there's no distinction between them. But 
to a grade nine student. This span of years is their entire lifetime. So we are looking at everything from kindergarten to grade 12 plus another year. That's how long people were fighting against Einstein's idea. And when this happened and word got out that it was verified, well, a lot of the fighting stopped. Not all of it. Some of it continued into the 90s. Look up autodynamics one day if you want to laugh at something. It's a horribly formulated theory. But Einstein's theories are most likely here to stay. Now I say most likely because of the fundamental nature of science. Science cannot say one thing is right and something else is wrong. It cannot tell you something is right. What it can say is at worst, something is not very wrong. So people like to say because science cannot prove anything is true, anything is possible. That's not the case. With science, we will take a series of experiments and come up with a window of possibility. So anything that's going to explain the world around us has to fit within that window. And as experiments get more precise and we collect more and more data, that window gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So it might become a window like this someday. And then another little while later, it becomes a narrower window. And as we keep narrowing it down, we can say some theories are gone. So is it possible that someday Einstein's work will be replaced just like Newton's ones? Yes, anyone would have to really admit that. But the people pushing for it, the people who want that, are generally the people who don't like length contraction, don't like time dilation, don't like having the light speed unit limit to the universe. There are aspects of the theory they don't like, those aspects are here to stay. If the length contraction is this line inside this window, a world without length contraction is out of that window. It is not permitted. So the features of relativity that a lot of people object to and find distasteful, those features are here to stay. Anything that replaces relativity is gonna have all of those features and it's going to have to be more complicated because that means we have some other correction terms happening in the small and deep decimal places that mean Einstein's theories are no longer in our allowed windows. So if anything comes out that says reality isn't fitting in that narrow window that relativity has, we're going to have to replace it with something that looks a lot like relativity in the regimes we've been able to test so far, but then looks very different on whatever scales we just get into. So that is going to be even less intuitive than anything we've seen so far. But that is a topic for another day. This will wrap up day four. And then in our fifth and final day, looking at relativity, we will discuss black holes.